In this video, we'll be going over the nature of roots past paper questions. We'll be tackling these questions, but just as a reminder, for any equation, quadratic equation, in the form of ax squared plus bx plus c, so for example, any of these given over here, we know we can use the quadratic formula to help us find our answers, our solutions, our roots. Some questions like these over here are going to ask you to comment on the nature of the roots without solving the equation. So we're not asking you to actually solve the equation. We're asking you to comment on the nature of the roots. Now, when we say comment on the nature of the roots, what we mean is you need to be able to tell us, are the roots, are the solutions real or are they non-real? Then are they rational or are they irrational? And then are they equal or unequal? So when a question asks you to comment on the nature of the roots and we give you a quadratic equation, you need to work out something that I'm going to show you now. And then you need to say, okay, these roots are real, they're irrational, and they're unequal. So you're going to tell me about each of these three categories. So the majority of our answers are going to have three phrases in them. Okay, now, how do we work out without solving if the nature of the roots is which category it falls into. As I mentioned, we need to use the discriminant. And this comes from my quadratic formula. It's this piece of the quadratic formula. And when we work out the discriminant, this triangle, we also call it delta. Now, delta, the discriminant, when you work it out, it's going to give you a particular value. If that value is less than zero, both of your roots are non-real immediately. So if you work out delta using this, and I'll show you how now, if you get delta and it gives you an answer of negative whatever, negative three, negative four, negative one million, then your roots are non-real immediately. If you get a delta value that is equal to or bigger than zero, your roots are real. If your delta is exactly zero, your discriminant is exactly zero, your roots are real and they are equal. So both of your solutions are the same thing, they're equal. Then if your discriminant is bigger than zero, and it's a perfect square. So what do I mean by perfect square? Basically, delta could be 4, or delta could be 16, or delta could be 25, or delta could be 1. All of these values are perfect squares. You should know your common perfect squares. You have listed a few for you. So if delta is equal to any of these values, then immediately you say, okay, cool. My roots are rational. When they're rational, they're also going to be real and they're also going to be equal, unequal, sorry. Remember, the only time that they are equal is if delta is 0. Right, then we get delta is bigger than zero and not a perfect square. So for example, delta could give you two or delta could give you five or delta could give you 28. Anything that is not a perfect square, then your roots are irrational. So perfect square, rational, not a perfect square, irrational. Here's another way to think about it. Remember, we work out delta using this formula over here, which you need to remember. And where do I get the B, the A, and the C from? When your equation is in standard form, which is equal to zero, okay, equal to zero, and descending powers of x. So you start off with x squared at the front, then your middle term is x to the power of one, and your last term is x to the power of zero. There's no x's over here. That's what descending powers of x means. When it's in that form, and it has to be in standard form, then A is your coefficient of the squared term. That is what A is. B is your coefficient of your x term, so negative 3 in this case. And C is your constant term. In this case, it's a positive 4. So you will substitute those numbers using brackets into this formula, and that will help me work out my discriminant. So let's do this past paper question. Without solving the equation, comment on the nature of the roots. So as soon as you see without solving, you know you need to work out the discriminant. So you need to write down your little discriminant formula. And remember, this comes from the quadratic equation. So if you ever forget it, it comes from the quadratic equation. Then check, is this in standard form? Yes, it's equal to zero. Yes, it is in descending powers of x. So a is the number in front of x squared. It's one. B is my coefficient of my x term with the sign. Please remember it's with the sign. So in this particular equation, it is positive six. And C in my equation, in this case, is negative 45. Remember, the sign is very, very important. Now what you do is you substitute. So in the place of B, I'm going to put positive 6. We square that. Then negative 4, that's part of your formula. A is a positive 1. And C is a negative 45. And you simply work that out on your calculator. And we get the fact that our discriminant is equal to 2, 1, 6. So immediately, we can see that my discriminant is bigger than 0 which means immediately that my roots will then be real. Roots are real. Remember, as soon as it's bigger than zero, there, bigger than zero, it's real. 
But is it equal to zero? Definitely not. So that means that if it's not equal to zero, it's unequal or not equal. Remember, if it is equal to zero, that's the only time that my roots will be equal. So it's real, it's going to be unequal. And then last thing, is it rational or is it irrational? Remember, we need to determine from these categories. We said it's real, so we did that one. We said it is unequal, so now we need to do rational versus irrational. Remember, it will be rational if this number is a perfect square. So is 216 a perfect square? Well, just pop it into your calculator under a square root. And it, no, it's not a perfect square. It gives me that. So therefore, it is not a perfect square. Not a perfect square. Therefore, it's irrational. And that's your answer. Let's do another one. Again, without solving the equation, discuss the nature of its roots. Check with your equation. Is it in standard form? Yes, it is. Our discriminant is b squared minus 4ac. Again, let's look because it's in standard form. Our b value is going to be positive 8. It is the number in front of the x term. So 8 squared minus 4a. Our a value is in front of our x squared term. It is a positive 3. And our c value is over here. It is our constant term over there. It's negative two. If you work that out on your calculator, you get 88. Now, just compare it to my delta key, which looks like this. 88 is definitely not less than zero. So therefore, it's not non-real. It's definitely bigger than zero. So therefore, it is real. If it's equal to zero, so if delta was equal to zero, then it would be equal roots, but it's definitely not equal to zero. 88 is not zero. So therefore, it's unequal roots. And then last thing, is it rational or irrational? Well, 88 is not a perfect square. Therefore, it is irrational. There we go. Last question is a little bit more difficult. Without solving for x, discuss the nature of the roots if... They give you a quadratic equation over here. It is in standard form because we go, it's equal to zero. We've got descending powers of x. So x squared is in the front, then the x term, and then no x. So how would you do this normally? I know that there's a k in this question. I know they're saying that k is an element of real numbers. And you're like, oh my word, I don't know what to do. How would you approach the question like normal? So we need to work out the discriminant. So start there. Don't panic. Just because there's a k doesn't mean we can't do it. So write down our equation for the discriminant. Now, b. Remember, b is still the coefficient of your x term. So b is negative k. I know that it, you're substituting in a k. It doesn't matter. Negative k squared minus 4. a is going to be 1. It is the coefficient of my x squared term. And c is over here. It's my constant term. It is negative 5. Now, try and simplify as best as you can. So negative k squared is k squared negative 4 times 1 times negative 5. That's going to get me a positive 20. I know it's not a single value that you can use the delta key to help you with, but think about it. Is delta, is it bigger than zero or is it less than zero? And I know you're like, ma'am, I can't tell because there's a K in here. Just think about it logically. If K is an element of real numbers, so all the real numbers that you can think of, okay? If you had to put something in the place of K, whether it's a positive number or a negative number, we are squaring it. If I substitute a negative value into k, so choose any negative value, like negative 3. If I substitute a negative value into k, remember use brackets, it's going to turn it into a positive value. So basically k can never, ever be negative. So therefore, the roots will always be real. And another thing that we can say for certain, so the roots will be real no matter what value of k we substitute in, um, obviously given that k is an element of real numbers. And another thing that we can say is that no matter what value we substitute in for k, even if we substitute in 0, 0 squared plus 20 will be 20. Any negative value, any positive value, it'll never ever give me an, a discriminant that is equal to 0. It'll never be equal to 0. So therefore, our roots will be unequal. Those are two things that we can say for certain. So that's it. That's how you answer this question. I hope that that was helpful in your preparation for this section. Remember to check out more past papers and algebra in general or maths in general. Links below. Bye, everyone.